So today we will be solving example 2.4, which reads, Consider the following graph, which represents the velocity of a runner plotted versus time. For each of the points A through E, determine whether the runner's acceleration is positive, negative, or zero. So first, we will plot out the graph with the five points. And then the first thing we do is define acceleration. So acceleration equals the change in velocity over the change in time. In other words, the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the final time minus the initial time. So in this case, we can assume that time is always positive because time is moving in the forward direction. So the only thing that we have to worry about in this problem is the change in velocity at each of the five points. So let us first define what the change in velocity will mean in terms of acceleration. So if the change in velocity is less than zero or is negative, then the initial velocity is greater than the final velocity, meaning that the velocity that you begin at is going to be greater than the velocity that you end at. So for example, if you wanted to think of this in terms of numbers, for those of you that that is helpful, you would be going from a velocity of 5 meters per second to a velocity of 1 meter per second. Or you could be going from a velocity of negative 2 meters per second to a velocity of negative 6 meters per second. It doesn't really matter whether the values of velocity are negative or positive. What matters is the change of the values of the velocity. So when our change in velocity is less than zero, we have an initial velocity less than our final, so our acceleration will be negative or less than zero. When we have a positive change in velocity, then our final velocity is going to be greater than our initial velocity. So this means that we're starting out at a lower velocity, for example, one meter per second, going towards a higher velocity of two meters per second. Or we could likewise say that we're going from a velocity of negative four meters per second to a velocity of zero meters per second. Either way, again, the numbers don't really matter. What matters is the overall change in velocity when we want to consider acceleration. So when we have a positive change in velocity, our acceleration will be positive. And finally, when our change in velocity equals zero, our final velocity equals our initial velocity. And this means that the velocity is not changing, meaning we're going from a velocity of five meters per second to a velocity of five meters per second within the same time frame. So in this case, the acceleration equals zero. Note that this doesn't mean that an individual value of velocity is either greater, greater, less than, or equal to zero. It means that the overall change in velocity is what we're interested in, whether it be less than, equal to, or greater than zero. So now let's take a look at our graph and at each of these points evaluate what is happening with the change in velocity. So at point A, the easiest way to do this is to draw a tangent line at each of the points. At point A, if we draw a tangent line, we can see that the initial velocity is the same as the final velocity. So this change in velocity is equal to zero, meaning that our acceleration, in this case, will also be zero. At point B, if we draw a tangent line, our initial velocity is going to be greater than our final velocity. So our change, in this case, will be negative. So our change in velocity is negative, therefore our acceleration is also going to be negative. At point C, we do same thing, we draw a, a tangent line. Our initial velocity, even though it's negative, is still greater than our final velocity. So our overall change in velocity is less than zero, therefore our acceleration is also negative. 
draw a similar tangent line and our initial velocity is less than our final velocity and that means that the change in velocity is positive therefore our acceleration is also positive positive. and finally at point E our initial velocity and our final velocity are equal so since the change in velocity is a zero our acceleration is also zero and that is how you solve example 2.4